Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today we're going to talk about what are resources in the Go engine. So let's start by defining what are resources. Resources are nothing more but data containers, right? So what does that mean? It means that they actually don't do anything by themselves, right? So for example, you would never call a function or a method from a resource script that we're going to learn how to define those without actually first creating an actual resource based on that script and that can be a bit confusing but we're going to get into it and you guys are going to know a little bit more about that right so let's also talk about some examples of built-in resources right so built-in uh resources in the engine right so for example you have a lot of the things that you guys are already working with in the engine is considered a resource so we have texture you have a script a script is a resource right you have a mesh you have uh, an animation you have an audio stream right uh you have a font uh anything basically and most importantly and one thing that people don't really realize that are actually resources is a packed scene so you probably seen something like um you probably seen something like this right so when you define a resource like uh, define a so you want to for example you have like an export uh var uh whatever next uh, scene and this is a type packed scene so here you're gonna define uh, in the inspector you're gonna drag uh, uh, a scene that you want to load and when you want to instantiate this guy you're gonna type um, next scene dot uh, instantiate right and you're gonna set that to like scene to a variable right and then you're just gonna like I don't know add child uh scene right so what is happening here is that uh you're actually using a method uh from defined in the resource right which is called instantiate which is in the resource that is a data uh, container with some information about the scene and this instantiate method returns a node right so this is uh, this is really cool and this is what this is when it starts to become very interesting to work with resources because uh, because resor if, if resources is nothing but a data container uh, why not just use a JSON or a YAML file uh, for or a config file or any other um, format right uh, and the, the reason is that resources can have methods along with a number of other things that we're going to see right so this is really cool so for example the resource packed scene has a method called instantiate that returns a node right and but you would never call uh you would never say something like this right like packed scene which is a class that inherits from resource uh, dot instantiate, instantiate because this doesn't mean anything because this resource hasn't been created yet. This is just a type basically at this point, right? So uh, some other interesting facts about, uh, about resources uh, are that um, resource also inherits from a class called ref counted right so this may be a complicated concept right now but basically means that resources are reference counted right so they're basically so you don't need to to worry about memory management with them up to a certain point of course if you're trying to optimize your 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 code you maybe pay more attention to that but uh at a high level basically means that when your resource is no longer needed it's automatically freed uh at least when you're working with gd script right because if you're working with c sharp it's a bit different uh resources are not automatically uh, free when they're not needed 
because garbage collector takes care of that, right? So garbage collector, garbage collector runs periodically on C sharp and free resources that are no longer in use. So this actually means that uh, resources on C sharp, uh, on C sharp, they linger a bit more. So you need to be, you need to pay attention to that uh, if you're trying to optimize a game or if you're looking for, for places to, to 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 improve your game. So another really cool thing about resources is that on top of being able to have methods, right? You can also have you can define signals, which is really really cool feature which by the way if you don't know what signals are we do have a, a video about signals on the channel so look it up i'll see if i link here and definitely in the descriptions you're gonna in the description you're gonna find an link to it so you can define signals so resources can actually trigger responses based on for example if uh, if uh, some piece of data changed resource is going to shoot a signal that it can be subscribed in your in your game and you can do whatever right um uh, so another important thing about resources is that neat resources can actually have other nested resources and i'll see if in our uh example in a bit i'll try to show you guys that um so you can have a resource which has a nested resources and that is really useful especially if you which is if you're dealing with another feature of resources which is uh resources can be saved to disk right and this is really cool because they, it, they can be saved and they can be actually loaded right so this makes possible for a number of different use cases using resources like for example for save games right a lot of people use for save games a lot of people use resources for for modding uh for uh, being able to add modding to your game but you do need to be careful i'm not gonna get into it on this video but you do need to be careful with uh importing external resources into your game because of because of this little feature right here it can have methods this means that if you're not careful you could import uh malicious code into your game but that's a topic for another video if you guys are curious about that please let me know that i'll definitely get into it so right now let's go into our uh live example which i prepare for you guys so if we i have already have a little project uh prepare here there's pretty there's not much going on on this project um i do have a save system here which is going to be a topic of another video also but for say for what matters for this video what we have here is basically a 2d scene um and we have a player defined we have a simple sprite here that does absolutely nothing and we do have a empty script on the player right on top of this what i do have here and i'm going to show you one simple use case for a resource for a custom resource is that i define another script here right which i basically came here new script uh and i just typed player for example, I can even define another one, player stat, and inherits from resource, right? Uh, create. So if I open my new script, inherits from resource, and uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste this guy just so you guys can see that it's the same. And here, I'm just defining my name. So basically here, I define a new custom resource of player stat, uh, let's call players. Yeah, players, that's fine. That has health and armor. So as you can see here uh, on resources, you can treat it just like any other class where you can uh, just export variables. You can define uh, functions, initialize, uh, right, uh, health. Um, yeah. health 100 um, armor 50 uh, and here you can just have health close. and anyway this is just to, to, to demonstrate for you guys that we can define functions and whatever else on our resources right and let's 
see this guy all right so how do we use this this player stat actually right you can see here that i already have a player data here right but i'm gonna show you guys how to use this player stat right so our player here as you can see is absolutely empty is an empty script so what i'm gonna do here now is that i'm gonna define an exported variable right var um i'm gonna call it player stat and i'm gonna give it a type of player stat right so what this does is that this allows me to uh, to define this variable here in the inspector right and if i click here quick load you're gonna see that there's nothing that matches uh, this type on my project so how do i get to to appear here i i can just come here to my file system i can say new resource you can see here this little menu here and i just look for my player stat and i'll give it a name all right so let me just give it a name just like my other guy uh player stat who cool. i'm gonna give it initial health of 50 and i need show armor of 75 awesome so then on my player i can come in here now quick load and now i have my stat, right and then now if i click on my player i can see the health and armor here all right so now that we have our resource defined we have our resource created and assigned to the player let's actually use this resource somehow and just so, just to exemplify how we can just play around with re resources right so here uh, let's just let's actually create a function in here in a resource right called uh, damage right value int right and in here we're just gonna say uh, health minus value right okay, so we define this function this method inside our resource right now in the player we have this variable of type player stat so now let's let's pretend that we got hit right for that i'm just gonna <clears throat> i'm just gonna get an input from the process i'm gonna just gonna pretend i Every time I hit enter, I get I get hit, right? And then I'm just gonna call damage by ten, whatever. And then I'm just gonna print, right? So I'm just gonna print just so I know that we're here. Layer process and. health uh, layer dot and by the way i like to use print t because every, on every comma it's a tab so it's easy to read so now let's just hit play and let's see what happens here in the console uh, okay oh see my new health now is 40 wait but my my health was originally 50 right Oh, but my new health is 40. What, what if I hit enter? Yo, now it's 30. Now it's 20. Now it's 10. Now it's 0. And I'm dead. So, here you guys could see a very simple example of how we created a data asset with a little bit of functionality to it. We added this data asset to our player, which we can add the same data asset to every other body in our, in our game, which simplifi simplifies a lot the process and you can use this to design a bunch of different stuff and within our player uh our player just tells the stat to hey take that take damage we don't really need to deal with the properties of stat here right and you can extend that to to do whatever you want here to actually return uh the property if you don't want to don't want people to access the property directly you can tell that okay every time um signal on damage every time i take a damage it can just say on damage emit and we could have some sort of special effect play in the screen when that happens 
and so on and so forth. So that's it, guys. Resources are not that complicated. Uh, it's pretty much this. I hope I was able to cover everything. I hope it was not too confusing. If you was, I'm sorry. Please feel free to add comments uh, down below. And if you have any requests, also add them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Cheers.